Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back in with another video and this is going to be the LEGO Star Wars Mock Showcase Episode 7. This is a series I have created to highlight some of the best mocks I've come across on the internet. If you find any of the mocks in this video impressive, all I ask is that you go to the links I've included in the description and support the builder by giving them a like, comment, or even a follow. The first mock we're going to take a look at today is a big boy. It is a UCS AT hauler done by a builder by the name of Simon Wilde. And I'm very impressed by this thing. It just looks so accurate and so realistic. Um, it's mostly snot, which is always a pleasure. And it's not done correctly. One of the things I can notice with people is they can go quote unquote overboard with snot. And so far as like, if you look at the wedge plates on the very uh, edges of those little wing things, like some people will basically take tiles and try to cover up the studs on wedge plates and I think that's a little bit too much for snot it kind of diminishes the effect of the wedge plate by having like blocky tiles put over it so I like it when people don't do that they can show a little bit of restraint there's no need to be 100% afraid of studs but when you can implement wedge plates and get the total effect of them I think that you've done a good job at um, using snot techniques in a mock the other great thing about this mock is that it's actually gray um, this is probably going to be a big debate sort of along the lines of, you know, is a snow speeder white or gray? And it's definitely gray. Or is an X-Wing white or gray? There's a little bit more of a debate there. But I think that I prefer to see the AT hauler in gray. It just, it isn't very shiny in the film, especially since most of the time we see it, it's against like the background of Vandor, which is obviously a snowy planet. And I mean, it just, it looks distinctively gray when compared to that. So I prefer seeing this thing in gray, unlike the Lego set. And he even included some like old gray elements um, on the little areas that connect the, I guess the like wings to the main body of the ship. Some people will say that this is a good thing because it like makes it look aged. I for one am not really a big fan of that, but I definitely know that there are some people out there who appreciate that. So it's certainly worth mentioning here. If we go to the next photo, it gives us a better shot at the side of the ship. And I really like the way he implemented those that like ring design that's on the wings. Um, it kind of reminds me of the shoulder of an ATAT -AT walker. Like if you'll imagine the legs of an ATAT -AT are arms instead, then like that little ring right there like looks like the shoulder of an ATAT -AT walker. So I like the consistency throughout like Imperial ships that we even get with these new vehicles. Um, and I don't know, I think he just did a good job at replicating that on the side of the AT hauler. There's also some really nice dribbling on the side of the main body, kind of between like the wing and the body. I'll actually zoom in on it right now. And yeah, you can get a pretty good look at it. Um, it kind of looks like a door. I imagine it's not a door. Like you probably definitely don't enter the ship through the side there, but I don't know. It's an interesting piece of dribbling, so I can appreciate that. If we move on to the next photo, we get a nice look at the back of the ship, and I just love the greebling that he did on the back of it. I know it's really easy to go overboard with greebling, especially with ships like this, but I think he showed some good restraint here, and he created something that looks very accurate and very nice. You know, it's not the most complex um, bit of greebling design, but it, it just looks really good, and it looks, it looks realistic, so I give him a lot of credit there. If we go to the next photo, we can see the bottom of the ship and we get a really nice look at that bottom walkway. And I think it's just so cool. That's actually probably one of my favorite parts of the design of this ship in canon, the fact that there's like the little walkway at the very bottom of it. I imagine that this would be used for crew members to survey um, the cargo that they're carrying just to give them a better look at it. And it looks like if you look at the bottom of the cockpit, there's maybe even like a window to where you can look down at whatever you're, you're trying to carry, which is actually a really good idea. It kind of reminds me of the Ewing design and so far as like the Ewing has a window um, below the pilots so they can get a better look at where they're going to be landing when they're dropping off troops. So they're just little cool design things like that that once again are consistent. Um, not only do you like factions, but just with ship designs and Star Wars in general. So I'm glad that they're um, sticking to general things like that. I just, I don't know, it, it's smart, it makes sense, and it, it makes for a pretty cool and complex ship design. If we go to the final photo, we can see the interior of it, which you guys know I'm always a fan of having any sort of interior on a vehicle like this. I'm presuming this ship is minifig scale, so it allows them to have um, two pilots sitting up front. I can imagine Han sitting on one side and Rio, poor little Rio, sitting on the other side, giving Han some life lessons as he reaches the end of his life. So yeah, all in all, I'm a really big fan of this mod. The one big takeaway that I get from this mod is that I would love to see this done and so 
some sort of diorama with like the AT hauler carrying cargo from the convict X and then some cloud riders trying to snatch it up from underneath them. I think that would make a really cool scene, especially just with this like, huge massive ship and give you a good opportunity to use tow cables, which are always fun to use in Star Wars mocks. So Simon, if you're out there, you know what to do, man. Put this thing in a big mock, do a big Vandor mock. I'm gonna hold you to that. The next mock we're gonna take a look at is the Darth Vader Funeral by Rui, Miguel, and Ecleto. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. The reason I decided to add this mock to this episode is because I feel it's relatively uncommon. You don't see too many of these Vader's funerals mocks floating around out there. And I don't know, it just every time I see this scene or a rendition of this scene, it just really evokes emotions for me. It's like the last moment that Luke really has um, with his father kind of as an actual being, you know, excluding the Force Ghost Anakin that appears at the end of the episode. But I don't know, it's just a really cool scene and a really cool end to um, Vader's character arc as a whole, you know, even after all he did he still kind of got a um a noble end by redeeming himself destroying the emperor and also um a noble end to his physical form by getting to go out in the traditional jedi sense um, i imagine it's the traditional jedi sense um since qui-gon got the same treatment in the first uh episode of star wars so i don't know i just i really like this scene and i think that he did a pretty good job at recreating it in lego if we go to the next photo we can see he actually incorporated some lights into the fire which is always cool one of the coolest parts of my vardo smock in my opinion was the fact that i was able to include lights in the exploded turret and there was flames coming from it as well so um i don't know anytime someone can incorporate lights with flames in a mock it just i mean that's a that's an automatic thumbs up i'm probably immediately going to like your mock we go to the final picture we can just see that um he takes it against a darker background which i actually prefer i think it kind of helps set the scene a little bit better and um, one of the things that i actually do really like about this mock is the effect of the fire the usage of multiple different fire pieces to kind of get across um that vader is obviously being burned um, I like this because fire is not the easiest thing to convey in Lego with the um, types of fire pieces we have. It's really easy to make it not look very good. So in order to have it flow and look relatively natural, um, I like it when people use the you know various different uh, pieces of fire and combine them in such a way that, that looks realistic. So I give him props for that here. And overall, it's a pretty nice little vignette for him to have. People are always asking me for mock ideas or specifically even small mock vignette ideas. And I think this is one that I'd like to see a little bit more of. I feel like it's not one of the more talked about scenes in Star Wars, but it is certainly an important one. So if you're looking for mock inspiration, here you go. This next photo is going to be a little bit different from the previous scenes that I've shown off in this series. I've noticed when looking for mocks to put in this series that I come across a lot of good just photography type photos that um, involve Lego Star Wars. And what I mean by that are photos that are more specifically meant to highlight like the, the scene and different photographic techniques as opposed to like the building techniques that you would use and just the overall build in general. So I figured like in these episodes moving forward, I wanna try my best to also incorporate some photos like these. I think they're really pleasing to the eye to look at whenever you can really just do a good job at setting the scene and something that's 100% Lego. I think that um, it's just a really appealing thing. So um, let me know what you guys think about this. Is this something you think it is appropriate for the series? I certainly think it is. So um, let me know you guys think about that but on to the actual photo and whenever I saw this I immediately knew what was going on and it just really made me chuckle so this photo is made by Corin Duffy and the caption on it is the Rancor Keeper's Lament after the death of his beloved Rancor Malakili the Rancor Keeper was inconsolable fearing the wrath of an angry boss the in-house entertainers the Max Rebo band decided to cheer Jabba the Hutt up with a swinging symphony of sounds after hearing Malakili wailing in the lonely corridor of the palace, the men invite him on stage to close out the gig with some somber blues original called Jedi Scum Killed My Dearest One. Um, I just love this so much. It's it's really creative and the picture itself just looks phenomenal as well. I love how there's um, familiar characters in the foreground. You can see there's like Bib Fortuna's head and I, I believe that's a Gomorian guard standing next to him. And then he of course has Max Rebo playing his fancy little piano. And then up on stage we have um, various musicians and of course uh, Malakili standing up front and center. 
still somber, still sad about the death of his rancor, but he's legend all loud on stage on the microphone, so um, you can definitely appreciate that. Um, I don't know, this, this picture just makes me smile so much. I hope you guys got a kick out of it as much as I did. And this guy, Corin Duffy, he has actually quite a few photos like this, so I definitely urge you to go check out his link in the description if you want to see more just funny, nice-looking photographs of LEGO Star Wars scenes. He has um, quite a few of them. And um, I really do hope to incorporate more things like this in the series moving forward. So let's go ahead and move along. The next mock we're going to take a look at is a Ren Var mock by WG Productions. And there are so many things I like about this mock. So let's just dive right in. One of the coolest things about this is I feel the contrast between the flat snot snow base on the bottom and then the stone texture right above it. I think that the usage of those one by one tiles to create that stone pattern for the ground just looks really nice. You can like distinctively see the lines there and then like parts of it are covered in snow and then just kind of broken up, makes it look even more like a battlefield. So I certainly appreciate that. One of the other cool things about this mock is just the placement of the figures. I think figure placement is always so crucial with something like this. Having good figure placement, especially with a mock that already looks this nice and detailed, can really just bring the mock up a whole other level. I think the figure placement is wonderful on this. I love how a lot of the droids are just completely wiped out. And um, I don't know, just there's a lot of action poses going on with the Galactic Marines. So all in all, figure placement on this mock is absolutely wonderful. One of the other cool things about this mock is the usage of those custom figures. Obviously, LEGO still hasn't felt the need to give us Galactic Marines, which is very unfortunate. But he's using those custom Galactic Marines along with a Bakara. And I like those figures. Uh, quite a bit. I think that ideally um, someone would do a custom of that using the most recent Snow Trooper headpiece. Hopefully we'll get that at some point because that headpiece is actually quite nice and I mean I love the Galactic Marine design so that would just really be the best of both worlds for someone like me so um, I don't know. I'll, I hope it'll happen at some point or you know if LEGO just decides to throw us a bone and actually give us Galactic Marines that will be nice too. I certainly wouldn't complain there but um, just the aesthetic of this mock is so wonderful you can really just get a sense of kind of how um, they're fighting in essentially like ruins of like you know what was probably previously a relatively smooth like stone surface and you can see like the bridge that the Superstar Destroyer is standing on as well as the ground in general has just been um, broken up probably due to many battles fought over this location and the various um, areas of like snow clusters across the stone also look really nice as well and this is just such a visually appealing mock to look at. One of the other things that really stuck out to me is that tattered confederacy flag at the top right corner. That thing just looks so awesome. That's a great use of that 2x2 um, two two tile piece with the the CIS sticker in the middle and um, just kind of having, you know, like the CAS with their, their flag planted in the ground, but clearly things aren't going too well for them as they are pretty much getting wiped out in this mock. So all in all, I just, I love this mock so much. This is definitely one of those builds that you put together and then just want to keep on your shelf forever. There's just so much to look at on a relatively small mock. And those are some of the best mocks, the ones that don't need, you know, multiple base plates to convey what's going on in a nice and detailed way. So wonderful job, WG Productions. I, I love this mock so much. The final feature mock we're going to talk about today is a dig up a mock by a user on Instagram by the name of the underscore Brickaholic. And wow, there are just so many things I can say about this mock. I actually reached out to him and had him send me a bunch of pictures of it because I knew I wanted to feature this thing on the showcase. It really stuck out to me. When I saw it on Instagram for the first time, my jaw literally dropped. So um, one of the coolest things about this mock, I think, is just the various leaf pieces. And this is probably a continuing trend you'll see on this uh, mock series. I am a sucker for foliage in Lego mocks. So whenever, whenever people can integrate it and integrate it well, I am... A huge fan of it and I think he just did it so well um, by having a lot of those leaf pieces just kind of hanging across the tree and it, it gives it um, a really swampy look which is obviously a key feature of Dagobah so I can appreciate that. Also the use of those like tactic pieces to make the branches on the trees are actually really cool as well and you can get some pretty fun and unique kind of um, designs with those things so I give him credit for that. If we go on to the next picture um, this is the one that really this might be my favorite picture of this mod for one reason and one reason only. Look at that reflection of the tree in the water. 
the fact that he was able to use those dark gray tiles and really get a nice like reflecting effect from them with the various things surrounding them it just looks so realistic like if you were there on Dagob and the swamps and you were looking at the water from this angle you would see something that kind of looked like this you'd see the tree reflecting off of the surface of the water and it's kind of um, imperfect because there's the one by two tiles use it so it kind of um, blurs the image a little bit and I think that just contributes to something that just looks so real realistic and I mean I really can't say enough good things about um, just the water technique. Um, there have just been so many various types of implementations of water in Lego Mox and Dagoba I would say sort of complicates things because you know it's not the nice pretty crystal blue water that you'd see on a beach but it's like dirty and there's like um, different things kind of floating around in it you know it's like swamp water essentially so being able to tackle that and make it look good in Lego is no easy feat I wouldn't imagine and this guy really just does it flawlessly I think that if I were to do a mock like this I would go with those trans black tiles to recreate the water because it just gives I would say the perfect effect especially with how the um, surroundings can kind of reflect off of it so this is the picture that really got me um, when I was looking through the photos that he sent me in this mock. If we move on to the next picture, you get a good look at um, the minifigure scene that's being set up. You have Luke um, trying to lift his X-Wing out of the water, tapping into the force with his eyes closed. And of course, you got Dirty R2 on the side of him and Yoda. And I mean, this is what these figures were made for. I'm so glad that the set came out because it really just opened up the possibilities that we had um, to do mocks, specifically from Dagobah in Episode 5. Previously, the only versions of these figures we got were, you know, a clean R2. Um, Yoda is pretty much standard, so there's no problem there, but we... The last version of Luke we had from Dagobah was like the yellow tone figure. So many, many years later, we finally get an update to these figures as well as the dirty R2. And I mean, this is this is what you want from these figures, right? You want to have these updated figures to put in a nice, beautiful looking Dagobah mock like this. So it really just makes me appreciate that Lego put out those figures. And this guy made, I'd say, perfect use of them. We go on to the next picture, we get a good look at the X-Wing and the water, and I mean, I've seen people do this, and it impresses me every single time when they can really just, like, integrate the X-Wing sitting on the, in, the, in the water and just really make it look seamless. Like, those are, you know, one by two tiles, and I'm sure he uses various other pieces to kind of, like, be shaped around, like, the contour of the X-Wing sitting in that water, but it looks almost perfect, like... I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys can, can understand exactly what I'm trying to convey here, but the fact that the X-Wing is sitting in the water and, I mean, it's at an angle, which would complicate things even more. I don't know, he just does such a wonderful job at having the pieces kind of go around the, the shape of the X-Wing in the water, and that's what always gets me when I see mocks like this. So, terrific job, man. I just, I just love this thing so much. We go to the final picture. I, I really like this one because it, it, I feel, just really sets the scene for what we see on Dagobah. You know, there's like a tree in the foreground. So um, just from the perspective of the viewer of this photo, it kind of like puts you in the, the Dagobah swamp. And then, of course, you see Yoda looking on to Luke, trying to um, train him and get him to tap into the forest and get that X-Wing out of the water and of course the trees in the background also help make the scene there's just there's so many trees everywhere in this mock and just different pieces of foliage and he just does an excellent job at getting down the swamp aesthetic so i really do love this mock and that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Lego Star Wars Mock Showcase. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed these beautiful mocks that I had to show off to you. I have so much fun looking through and finding these things. And um, it is my pleasure that I get to share them with you guys because these builders do such an excellent job. The only thing I can ask for you is that if you find yourself impressed by anything in this video, follow the links that I include in the description and go support those builders. Give them a like, follow. I'm sure they would appreciate the recognition that they oh so certainly deserve. So if you like what I do, guys, go ahead and support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, and I'll be back again very soon.